Hello, this is Hoopy Guilo at Hoopy Geeks. How have you been this week? Have you watched any good movies? This week we're starting the 1920s and we're going to go all the way to the 11th of January in 1920 for my first film on Blu-ray and this is a short film starring Roscoe Fatiabacal and Buster Keaton. This film is The Garage. It is featured on the Buster Keaton, the complete short films, Blu-ray collection. I gave this a 5 out of 10. And my review for this is Fatty and Buster's final film together is a good one. But like many silent comedies, ends too quickly. Next film is One Week. This is a Buster Keaton film. This was directed by Buster Keaton and Edward F. Klein. And he's now with Metro Pictures. And this I gave a 6 out of 10. I've written perfectly enjoyable and entertaining shot. Some good stunt work and clever planning. Keaton's first solo film features an early fourth wall break. The next film is Convict 13. This is another Buster Keaton film. So we are going to be seeing a lot more of uh, Buster Keaton in the 1920s and a lot less of Charlie Chaplin. Uh, directed by Buster Keaton and Edward F. Klein once more. This one I have given a 5 out of 10. And I've written an enjoyable shot from Keaton. Keaton is taken to be hanged after a case of mistaken identity. The next film is Neighbours. This is a 1920 Buster Keaton film. Joe Roberts is also in this film, but also directed by Buster Keaton and Edward F. Klein. Given this a massive 8 out of 10, this is by far the best film in my collection so far. I have written a really fun shot with some amazing stunts especially Keaton on the shoulders of his friend who is on the shoulders of another friend. Yes, very, very good film. Very spectacular stunt work in this one and very well planned and thought out from Keaton. The next film is The Scarecrow, another Buster Keaton film with Sybil Seeley and Al St. John. And I've given this one another massive 8 out of 10. And I have written an excellent chase by a dog and motor chase at the end. Some inventive stuff, as expected from Keaton. Ends abruptly, though. Yeah, a lot of these short films did end very um, abruptly, but that just seemed to be the style of the, of the film at the time. The next film starts 1921, so we're already moving a lot quicker through these than what we did through the 1910s. This was released on the 16th of January, 1921, and this is The Kid. This one is a Charlie Chaplin film, directed by Chaplin and starring Charlie Chaplin, and stars Jackie Coogan as The Kid. Jackie Coogan would go on to appear as Uncle Fester in the 1960s uh, black and white uh, television series of The Addams Family. This is Chaplin moving into um, longer films. This is actually 53 minutes long. And I've given this one a 5 out of 10. And I've written down, regarded as one of Chaplin's best and also his first feature-length film. This isn't bad and there's enough entertainment from Coogan's titular kid. A few laughs and emotion make this a good film, although nothing amazing. So Chaplin's style is mixing humour and, and emotion uh, together. Uh, to create quite an emotional um, and, and more of emotional films and uh, he does succeed with this this film uh, even though I gave it only a 5 out of 10. Uh, this incidentally is included on the Chaplin Collection uh, box set. The next film is The Haunted House, also 1921. We're back to Buster Keaton with Virginia Fox in this one. Uh, this is directed by Buster Keaton and Edward F. Klein. I have given this a 5 out of 10 and I have written an OK film from Keaton. Not his best silent comedy, but not bad. The next film is Hard Luck. Buster Keaton film once again, once again with Virginia Fox. Also directed by Buster Keaton and Edward F. Klein for Metro Pictures. This one is a 5 out of 10. And I've written down that Buster tries commit suicide. 
eventually finds a job. Some good gags, including the final gag, Keaton's favourite from his short films, which was lost until 1998. The next film is The High Sign, another Buster Keaton film. This one also directed by Buster Keaton and Edward F. Klein and is a 7 out of 10. This one I've written a creative and quite enjoyable Keaton short. The dog scene is funny. Ending seems a little sudden, so that's very much a trend with these films. End, sudden ending. Still in 1921, we have The Goat. This is a Buster Keaton film, again with Virginia Fox. Directed by Buster Keaton, this time with Mal St. Clair. This is 23 minutes long, and this one I have given a 7 out of 10 again. So you can already see Buster Keaton scoring very, very highly. Here he's got 8s, he's got two 8s and two 7s so far. I have written, wrongfully accused of murder, Keaton is chased around town and up and down a lift, which is highly entertaining. The next film is The Idle Class. We're back to Charlie Chaplin with Edna Purveyance. This was directed by Chaplin. This one is once again available on the Charlie Chaplin Collection box set. I've only given this a 4 out of 10 and I have written, Chaplin plays dual roles. Again, a few nice touches in this film while there's nothing outstanding. Our next film is 1921's A Lucky Dog. And this one stars Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. And this is the first time they ever appear together on screen. And this one is directed by Jess Robbins. Uh, it's 16 minutes long from Sun Life Pictures and is was available on the Laurel and Hardy Collection Volume 1 in my collection. I've given this only a 4 out of 10. The first screen pairing of Laurel and Hardy. For such a short film, it drags out, like so many silent comedies. The timing of the physical comedy is spot on. An interesting watch. And yes, it's interesting because it's their, their first appearance uh, together. The next film is The Playhouse. Still in 1921, we're back to Buster Keaton. And this one is directed by Buster Keaton, and we're back with Edward F. Klein. This one I gave another 7 out of 10. And I've written Buster Keaton appears as many characters in an amazing, for the time it was made, special effect. The film turns into a typical runaround, but is still a fun film. So yeah, some, some good camera work, some good effects for very early films. And uh, yeah, one quite an impressive one in the collection. The next film is The Boat. This is another Buster Keaton film with Sybil Seeley and Edward F. Klein appearing. And Buster Keaton and Edward F. Klein also direct this one together. Uh, this one is on 27 minutes long and I have given this an 8 out of 10. So again, another really highly scoring um, Buster Keaton film. I have written for this one, Fantastic Buster Keaton, set on an own made boat. Well thought out and very funny. And I remember this one really well. This is the one where the boat's actually turning upside down. I don't know how they've done it. I guess he's he's got his shoes tied to the uh, to the set and they're spinning the set around because I don't think the cameras could spin around very easily back then. I mean, the setup is him building the boat, launching the boat, and then has an adventure sort of on the boat with his family. The next film is The Sawmill. We're now in 1922. This is an Oliver Hardy film with... Larry Semon and this is directed by Norman Turong and Larry Semon. This is 21 minutes long by Larry Semon Productions. This is presented on the Lauren and Hardy collection volume 5 in my collection and this is a 5 out of 10 so I believe this is is this the best Laurel and Hardy made film that I have at the moment for this one I have written a nice stunt work from star Larry Semon and cast but ultimately it's a silent comedy with the same sort of sight gags and stunts as many of the films of this era okay um, next film is The Pale Face starring Buster Keaton and Virginia Fox with Joe Roberts, directed once again by Buster Keaton and Edward F. Klein. This one, another 25-minute short film. This one I have given a 4 out of 10, but I've not written any comments for this one. I've not done my mini-review. 
The next film is Cops, 1922, with Buster Keaton, Virginia Fox, and Joe Roberts. Once again, Edward F. Klein appears in this one, and he's co-directing once again with Buster Keaton. This one is only 18 minutes long, and is a 5 out of 10. And I've written down a lot to like here in a good Keaton short. The next film is The Show. 1922. This is a Larry Semon film with Oliver Hardy. This one is directed by Norman Taurog, Larry Semon. It's on volume 5 of the Laurel and Hardy collection in my DVD collection. I have given this one a 7 out of 10, which is a very good score. I have written some spectacular stunts during the train chase make this well worth watching. And the surprisingly hilarious spitting, vomiting chicken is especially odd. Yeah, that is um, pretty weird. Pretty weird, as you can see by the clip. The next film is Payday, a 1922 film with Charlie Chaplin, Edna Purveyans, Phyllis Allen, Max Swain, Sidney Chaplin. This is presented on the Charlie Chaplin collection, A Woman of Paris disc. And I have given this a 5 out of 10. I have written The Cane on the Grate, The Overfull Streetcar, The Catching Brick Scene are all amusing. But overall, the film is still an average silent comedy. So there's some really good set pieces in this film, but overall it doesn't quite gel together. Uh, my next film is My Wife's Relations. We're back to Buster Keaton again. And in this film, we have Kate Price. And once again, directed by Buster Keaton and Edward F. Klein. So they've clearly got a very good um, directing partnership going on here. And I have given this one a four out of ten. And I have written some good gags, an amazing end stunt, an all round not bad Buster Keaton film. And this one also includes an alternative ending on the Blu-ray. The next film is The Blacksmith. This is Buster Keaton and Virginia Fox with Joe Roberts again. This time Buster Keaton is directing once again with My St. Clair. I have given this film a 6 out of 10. And I have written Not Bad Film with two versions. And yes, there's an alternative version of this film. So there was a, a, a pre-release version of this film and a theatrical release version of this film, both of which are available on the Blu-ray as pictured. The next film is Blood and Sand from 1922. This is a Rudolf Valentino film and this one was directed by Fred Niblo. This is 80 minutes long, so it's a feature length film and this one is a romantic drama. I have given this one a 6 out of 10 and I have written down there's quite a lot to read in this one. Valentino is actually quite good and shows a comic side early in the film and a mature character later. Nice visual effects for a film of this age. Romance films, not really the sort of films uh, I go for. Uh, this DVD I have in my collection uh, because uh, my mother gave me this um, because I was, I was watching a lot of silent movies and I had a lot of silent movies on uh, DVD at the time. Uh, she thought I, I would be interested in it. It adds another element to my film collection. Uh, shows another side of cinema at this time, not just the silent uh, comedies that were there. The next film is The Frozen North. We're back with Buster Keaton, and this one is Buster Keaton directing with Edward F. Klein again. 18 minutes long. I've given this a 4 out of 10. Some good sight gags. The cutout bandit, the fishing scene, and falling through the igloo are still funny. The next film is The Electric House. Buster Keaton and Virginia Fox. Buster Keaton once again directing with Edward F. Klein. 23 minutes long film. This one is a 5 out of 10. And I've written down full of inventive ideas and gags. Sadly it ends very abruptly as seems common with many silent shorts. The next film is Daydreams, Buster Keaton and Joe Roberts. I've given this a 6 out of 10, so it's a good score. And I have written Quite Fun Keaton with Good Gags. Sadly, the Blu-ray edition reveals the strings holding up Keaton due to the high definition. But it's a good film regardless of it being a typical runaround. The next film is Mud. 
and Sand. This is a 1922 film starring Stan Laurel. This one is a comedy shot, but it's actually a parody film. And it's actually a parodying and very much making fun of Blood and Sand, the Rudolph Valentino film. So Blood and Sand was released on the 5th of August and Mud and Sand, the parody, was released on the 13th of November. So we've had three months and they've seen the Rudolph Valentino film and already made a, a parody um, of it. And I've given this a 7 out of 10 and I have written down a successful parody of Blood and Sand. Helps to have seen Blood and Sand beforehand to appreciate most of the jokes. So if I hadn't got that Rudolph Valentino film as a gift, um, I wouldn't have understood the gags from this um, this Stan Laurel film. And you know I'm quite gra- grateful of that, having seen them both. So we're now in 1923 with The Balloon Attic. This is a Buster Keaton film. This time he's appearing with Phyllis Haver and Babe London. Still directed by Edward F. Klein and Buster Keaton. Only 26 minutes long, still with Metro Pictures. I have given this one a 5 out of 10. And I've written down inventive and amusing comedy from Keaton. The next film is The Love Nest, 1923. Buster Keaton, Virginia Fox and Joe Roberts. Same directing team, Buster Keaton and Edward F. Klein. 24 minutes long. This one I've given a 5 out of 10. And I've written down another good Keaton film, Keaton Takes to the Seas. The next film is White Wings. And we're back with Stan Laurel. Appearing alongside Stan Laurel is James Finlayson, who was a Scottish actor. Would be the inspiration to Homer Simpson's dope sound. Uh, The original sound, uh, Dan Castellaneta based it on. um, James Finlayson used to do a dope. Dan Castellaneta, who voiced Homer Simpson, took that and shortened it down for animation. So it's inspired by James Finlayson. This was directed by George Jeske and Stan Laurel is now with Hal Roach Studios. Hal Roach, of course, will bring Laurel and Hardy together into the comedies that we we are more familiar with. And this is presented on the Laurel and Hardy collection, volume 5 in my collection. I've given this only a 4 out of 10. I've written down A Cop Chases Stan, predictable comedy with well-used jokes from the era. Next film is Oranges and Lemons. This is a Stan Laurel film. James Finlayson also appears in this one. And once again, directed by George Chesky. This one, however, is on the Laurel and Hardy collection, volume two in my collection. Another four out of ten. And I've written down some humour in an otherwise repetitive comedy. The next film is Three Ages. This is a Buster Keaton film directed by Buster Keaton and Edward F. Klein. This is a feature length film. This is 63 minutes long. This one is actually presented on the Buster Keaton collection volume 2 that I have on DVD. I gave this film a 6 out of 10. And I've written Keaton's first own made film has aged well. There are some very funny scenes, especially in the Roman scenes. Good comedy. The next film is Roughest Africa, 1923. We are back with Stan Laurel and James Finlayson, directed by Ralph Cedar. Presented on the Laurel and Hardy collection, volume one in my DVD collection. Ooh, this one's only a three out of ten. This is actually the lowest rated film of the 1920s so far. And I've written down a dull comedy from Stan Laurel and James Finlayson. Nothing really new for a silent comedy. Now the next film is A Woman of Paris. This stars Edna Purveyance. This was directed by Charlie Chaplin. And this one is 81 minutes long feature length film. I have given this film a 5 out of 10. And I've written down that this is Chaplin's first drama and one not to star Chaplin himself. Not bad romantic drama that shows the decadence of the 1920s. And for this it is most interesting with wild parties and flappers. Still average for a silent film. And the next film is The Soilers from 1923. This is Stan Laurel and James Finlayson once again. 
directed by Ralph Cedar. Only a 10 minute long film from Hal Roach Studios. This one is also presented on the Lauren Hardy Collection Volume 1 DVD and it's another 3 out of 10. Just a long fight between Finlayson and Laurel, broken up by an amusing camp cowboy. Certainly the earliest camp character I have seen. The next film is called Smithy. I've put in brackets The Home Wrecker. This film stars Stan Laurel, James Finlayson and William Gillespie. This was directed by George Jeske and Hal Roach himself. Uh, this one is actually presented on the Laurel and Hardy Collection Volume 2 and the Laurel and Hardy Collection Volume 6. And that's why it's got two titles, Smithy and The Homewrecker. Smithy's included on one, The Homewrecker's included on another one. There doesn't seem to be any difference between the two. It's just like they've, they've got the films with the different titles, put one on with one title and the other with another title and another film. Uh, you just double dip in. It's the same film, as far as I can tell. I couldn't see any differences. This one, I have written a pretty standard comedy. Stan helps build a house. And I gave this a 4 out of 10. The next film is Short Kilts, 1924. Stan Laurel, James Finlayson. This one is on the Laurel and Hardy Collection, Volume 2. I've given this another 4 out of 10. And I have written repetitive silent comedy, but cast are good. The next film is Kid Speed, also Four Wheel Terror. So like the previous film Smithy and the Homewrecker, this is the same film with two different titles. This one stars Larry Semon again with Oliver Hardy. And this one is directed by Larry Semon and Noel M. Smith. This one is on volume two of the Laurel and Hardy collection and volume five of the Laurel and Hardy collection. I've given this film a 6 out of 10, and I've written down an enjoyable silent comedy with a possible KKK joke that is actually quite funny. There are some black face jokes here, but Spencer Bell has a good role for a black actor in the 20s. So Spencer Bell is quite an interesting actor. He's actually one of the first African-American comedic actors of the silent film era. And uh, he was apparently the first to be signed to a film contract. Apparently he was typecast in stereotypical roles at the time, but it's very interesting that he is the first um, black comic actor um, of this, um, this era. So apparently he appeared with uh, Larry Semon, uh, quite quite often, so he's quite a, a regular Larry Semon actor. I'm going to have to look out for him, see if I've li written his name down, because that's quite historically important, I would say. The next film is West of Hot Dog, 1924, We're Back with Stan Laurel. This one was directed by Joe Rock and Scott Pembroke. This one is available on the Lauren Hardy Collection Volume 3. This one I've given a 5 out of 10. OK Comedy, Stan in the Wild West, a few good sight gags. And that ends part 4 of my complete movie and DVD collection. Um, I do believe it's, it's picking up a little bit. The 1920s do seem a lot more um, enjoyable, certainly with Buster Keaton. And more, a bit more interest with uh, Laurel and Hardy appearing um, as well. Quite enjoying the 1920s at, at this point. And we'll, I'll see you next time for part five of my collection, which will be 1925 to 1929. As always, good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. And I will say, as always, joy again.